A very good evening to you and thanks for joining. Questions in the ad again tonight. How has your day been? Today you can hear me very, very clearly. I lost my voice last week and I struggled a bit to speak. Thank God you can hear me today. How has your day been? Tonight we're going to continue with that lovely topic we started last week. That topic of concern in our society. Domestic violence and abuse. Tonight we're going to look at domestic violence and abuse in the ethnic community, you know. Uh, domestic violence and abuse is nearly seen as normal in the ethnic community. Earlier on today, I was discussing with a friend of mine, who is an African, about domestic violence and abuse. And he said there is nothing like domestic violence and abuse. There is nothing like that term, domestic violence and abuse, with the ethnic I mean, the ethnic community, especially with Africans. He said because it's just normal for a man to beat up his wife in case he's not doing things right or in case he's not meeting up his standard. It's just normal to teach his wife sense by beating her up. Tonight, domestic violence in the ethnic I mean, community is our topic on questions and that. Don't touch the dial. Thanks for staying with us and for your friends and family members who would love to watch us online. We are online on www.faithworldtv.com. Please get in touch, I mean, with them and let them log on online wherever they are in the world. They can be part of tonight's episode. And for those who missed the first episode on domestic violence and abuse and you want to, you know, benefit from it, log on to www.questionsintheart.com. That's our website. The episode is there and it's on YouTube as well. You can, you know be a part of it, learn from the episode last week and let your friends know that they can catch up on the first episode on domestic violence and abuse on it and as well, you know, watch us live tonight on faithworldtv.com to write with us on domestic violence and abuse in the ethnic community. I've got two lovely, gorgeous ladies in the house with me tonight. Um, I've got Shirley Martins who is a domestic violence and abuse consultant. And I've got with her tonight as well, Boma Oruwari. She's a consultant as well. I'm going to allow um, Shelly introduce herself first and tell us what you do. I know you, 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 you help organizations and uh, you work with victims. You help organizations, you know, bring victims, you know, back to a, a stabilized state, you know, after being through a lot via domestic violence and abuse. Well, I will allow you to tell us more about yourself. Shirley Martins, it's nice having you on Questions in the Heart. Oh, thank you so much, Esther, for having me. You're welcome. I work with women who have had the experience of domestic violence one-to-one, yeah. uh, -one, mm. but I also work with women developing programs okay. that build self-esteem and self-confidence, mm. looks at um, how to choose better, mm. look at relationships, about parenting, okay. the impact of domestic violence mm. on us and within a cultural context as well. Yeah. So challenging all the myths around yeah. why as African people, and although I'm from the Caribbean, I identify as being an African woman. Yeah, isn't it? The myths around violence, mm. domestic violence, and the reasons why we need to challenge it, mm -hmm. challenge those myths, okay. and the importance of looking at our children and mm -hmm. the impact that domestic violence has on our children. Wow. Nice having you one more time, Thank Shirley, you. on Questions in the Head. And Boma. Hi. Um, I write um, and blog about domestic abuse, um, and my passion would be to encourage churches, church leaders, and the church community to educate themselves about domestic abuse okay. and to forge links with the, the organisations that deal with it so that they're not waiting for something to arise before they try to they deal with it, but they've okay. already got uh, procedures in place, they've got s someone who works in, the, in place, okay. somewhere to refer it to, um, and I just blog about experience of domestic violence within the context of Christian faith. Oh, okay, okay. It's nice having you both on questions in the act tonight. 
Mm -hmm. um, let, let's keep the ball rolling tonight. I'm going to start with you, Shirley. Mm -hmm. From your experience and in your context, what is domestic violence and abuse? Oh, it is um, physical. <coughs> but Excuse often, me. matter of fact, for the most part, it is really physical. It's about control mm -hmm. and domination. It's certain behaviors that we sometimes don't identify as being violent. Mm. That is. So it's the isolation very often that men practice. So they exclude you. They mm. make sure that you don't have your family around you. It's the control, the way you dress, the way you speak, the put downs that they, they, they <coughs> give to you. Excuse they me. want to dress you. Mm. They control your money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those kinds of behavior that sometimes we just see that as, you know, normal. as normal. And, with, and, and of course, you know, as we talked about earlier, yes, they give you a slap, but very often they only have to do that once or twice, don't mm. they? Because in <clears> fact, <throat> the emotional abuse wow. is what really they see working so mm. that you live in constant fear and anxiety. It doesn't really have to be physical. It doesn't have to. Of course, it's not physical. For the most part, it isn't. Wow. It is, you know, the key in the door and you're mm. afraid. It is the mood that he's in. So you might be quite happy. And just seeing him, you get palpitations because you know that he shouts, he's got a look. His silence even have you in fear. Isn't it? And very often, you, you know, if there are children, you're trying to make sure the children don't sneeze too hard. Of course, no two days are the same. So whereas today, you know, he might come in and he just looks over and the carpet isn't clean and enough. Trouble. It'll change. I think, yeah, I think that, um, this, as you say, the psychological side is major. It's, it's often bigger than the physical side. What um, I think an abuser tries to do is they try to apply a filter. So every decision that you make mm. goes through their filter. So you might decide, think that you're deciding what to wear, but they, the way that they have controlled you psychologically over a period of time through the strategies that they use has made you think before you're... You're not, ask, you're not answering for yourself anymore. You're answering as they would want you to ask. So even if they're not around. Mm -hmm. and So for example, I remember um, someone asked, what colour should I paint my kitchen? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't answer for myself after years of being in an abusive relationship. I thought he would say blue. And I couldn't tell wow. them mm -hmm. what colour my own interests had gone. My opinions and my identity had goes, went through a filter you that he had placed. Your personality. Completely which is what I think is the major danger of domestic violence because there are those who will, will die and suffer physical abuse, but there's many, many women whose identity is lost. And if without your identity, mm. how can you fulfill the purpose for which God put you on the planet? Exactly. And mm. for me, that's the thing that pains me the most about domestic violence. It takes away your ability to fulfill God's plan for your life because wow. you're living through conditioning of somebody else. And that's wow. why domestic abuse is wrong and it's power and it's control yes. and mm. it, it needs to stop. There's mm. no excuse for it. Absolutely no excuse for it. A man trying to control you, control your finances, control your where you go, what you eat, what you do, who your friends yeah. are, how often you see your family, what you wear. You Talk. can never be right before. You me. can never be right. No. You can never. And, and the other thing, of course, is that too many of these men they are so charming with other people so that when you start to talk about how it is living with them people think you're telling lies yes. they don't believe they, they don't believe you they're nice outside and, mm. inside. Yes. and mm. they've got tactics to show how you are a baddie wow. they may not overtly say she did this or that but mm. they might do things like you're going to a gathering of friends yeah. and on the way, for no reason, they'll have an argument with you in the car. They will tell you that you're nothing. They will pick out everything that you've done wrong over mm -hmm. the last week. They'll tell you that you're dreadful. They might be abusive um, verbally and then you'll arrive somewhere and they'll be like, oh, darling, hey, can I get yes, you a drink? Yes, but now you're yes. in a mood. Wow. So because of what they've done in the car <laughs> wow. and what it appears to other people is that he's got this high maintenance, moody, moany, mm. look how much he's doing for her, he's getting mm. her her plate of food, he's, you and know, yes, being a good moody and yes. happy. but they don't realise yes. what happened in advance. So they wow. may not say, she mm. does this, 
They don't have to. They but construct they it in, in the minds of mm. others. People feel that think that abusive abuse only happens to that person. Yes, it does. But that uh, abuser is generally manipulative and manipulates all the people that he has close. Wow. So as soon as someone thinks realizes that he's ab abusive, you'll, he'll you'll, he'll often cut that person off mm. wow. because he only wants people around him that maintain the view of him that he wants. Wow. Or he lays the ground, yes. doesn't he? That's so serious. That's serious. That's serious. <laughs> If you've got any question to ask us tonight, maybe from the first episode on domestic violence and abuse, or from our chat tonight, we might not take any live calls. We might not. We might not take any live calls. I would advise you, please, text your questions live. The num number to text your questions to will be on the screen. Send us your questions from the past episode and from our chat tonight. I can assure you, we'll read your questions out, and then um, Shelley is there, Boma is there, they will be able you know, they are, they are both professionals, they will be able to do justice to answering your questions. Okay, uh, Bo, um, Ch uh, Charlie, mm. this is a statement from Women's Aid UK. Mm -hmm. Domestic abuse affects women from all ethnic groups. Yes. And there is no evidence to suggest that women from some ethnic or cultural communities are any more at risk than others. In your own experience, mm. is this totally true, especially in the black community? Uh, I, would, I would seriously reconsider that. It's not that we are more at risk, mm -hmm. but it is that we, have, we are less likely to access services. Mm. We are less likely to go for help. We're less likely to share. Wow. Um, and then, and, and I think the critical issue for me, as, as, a, as, a, as a, a black woman who's had that experience, is the construct of racism and how it actually impinges on our ability mm -hmm. to seek help. Wow. And of course, um, when they talk about uh, uh, women from different ethnic groups are not more at risk, yeah. I think that racism contributes the, the part that racism plays sorry is such that very often we have a heightened awareness mm -hmm. of whether or not we feel we've been slighted and whilst a lot of our men might not challenge out there yeah. when they come mm. home that is the place where they have to dominate yeah. and they can express themselves mm. that is what i believe mm. i don't know what, what you would say i think that um the risk is the same because every community might have different factors that they use to excuse their violence yeah. or their need to dominate. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's a choice, outside factors shouldn't play that big a part. So, for example, I think there are many men, black men, who experience challenges outside because yeah. of their gender plus their mm. ethnicity, mm. but they don't go to abuse. Okay. Um, those who do, I think the factors are that they have this sense of entitlement. Maybe they've seen abuse happen at home, so they've, they've seen their father treat their mother, or maybe their sisters, yeah. a certain way, so they think that this is the right thing to do. It's they, just normal. Yeah, so I think that's prob that probably contributes more than ethnicity. Okay. Um, and I think I'd just like to add to the question that you asked before. Yeah that there are many different ways that abuse takes place. So you yeah. said financial, mm -hmm. um, it could be sexual, it could be physical, yeah. emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, different women may experience it differently. So you might find that there's, you have two women who experience just domestic abuse. One's finances were completely controlled and one was quite free to spend her money the way she mm -hmm. wanted. Um, one may not have been allowed to go out mm -hmm. and have, hang out with their friends, while another one was free to hang out with, with their friends. Some might have been able to have male friends, but not female friends. Mm -hmm. So there are differences that ha how it manifests, but the fact that there is some control, yeah. um, and they may mm. not even be fear, because a lot of women don't even realise they're in abusive <coughs> relationships. So they're not, they're not fearing for their life. Wow. Even if there is violence, they're not, they're not afraid, because they don't realise... If you said to them, you've given me this list of what happened to you this week, yeah. and this is abuse, mm -hmm. they'll say no because I am not that woman. Wow. Abuse happens to these women. Mm. Um, and there's uh, a level of denial which takes place because society tells us that these sorts of women get abused. Mm. Oh, you know, they may be stupid, they may be doormats. That's not true. Often, an abusive man will go for somebody who looks good on his 
good with him, mm. either physically or mentally. You know, they want to brag about them. Oh, you know, my that's wife my got wife. a promotion mm. at, at work. My wife, she manages people. Or my, so that's why people are surprised when you say they find out this exec chief executive was in an abusive relationship for years. Wow. But if you understand the nature of abuse, Someone who needs to control someone is not going to get a boost from controlling someone who's like, yes, control me. Yeah, you know, I want someone to dominate it? me. Mm -hmm. If you're some, if they can feel satisfied with it, it will be somebody who. It gives them, you know, it has to be a ch more of a challenge. It has yeah. to, you know, otherwise, where's the, where's the sense they can of get control? Intimidated with. Where's the sense of control mm. if you control somebody who wants to be controlled, who's very easily controlled? Mm -hmm. Often, it's women who are successful. Uh, mm. in some way or have many good qualities that they want to claim as their own this is my wife because she's your property so whatever's wow. good about her it's you if wow. your wife gets a promotion at work you did it some you don't you, you don't know what she does <laughs> but it's you it's you it's, you know it's wow. your you, you take the credit for it if anything and the conversely if anything goes wrong in his life you're uh, even if it's blame. at work you're to blame mm. if something happened to him mm. 20 years ago in his childhood somehow you're to blame you must be punished for it wow. and so often women start to feel like they need to they need to rescue them, they need to help them. You know, they've mm -hmm. gone through all these challenges. And we make excuses for them, oh, you know, the challenges at work, or, you know, their childhood, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, just it, it's, being a black man is stressful. And wow. yes, there are these things, you know, there was a documentary on yesterday about mm -hmm. the challenges that young black men face black getting work. Face, yeah. mm -hmm. And that's reality, but that does not excuse your behaviour. It's not a reason. Mm -hmm. It's an excuse. And I it's think something that you hide behind. Yeah. That's the kind of thing I was talking yeah. about. So I wasn't saying that is the reason why they should and make excuses yes. mm -hmm. for that. You know, it's just drawing a context. Yes. Yeah. Really. Which, yeah. yes, it is. It's and the whole thing about race and ethnicity gives yeah. someone an excuse, which means that people might be more likely to excuse their yeah. behaviour yes. because you're saying, well, yes. I understand yes. the challenges you face. face. Uh, so therefore, I'm going to cut you a bit more slack. But what we need to be saying is, categorically, domestic mm -hmm. abuse, domestic violence, controlling another human being who you did not create it's is not wrong. Right. Mm. And that's mm. it. It's not right. Mm. There is no excuse to justify Absolutely. domestic violence there isn't. and abuse. Okay, okay. Boma, in African communities, mm. or let's, let's say in ethnic communities, um, men are brought up to believe that women by nature are inferior to them. A man then marries a woman and sees her as a subordinate and someone he can control, like, like you just mentioned. Is there any justification for raising our boys like this? Absolutely not. It's the short answer. Um, God created us all equal. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of the time people will refer to the Bible as a reason for abuse to take place. Yeah. But the way that I read the Bible mm -hmm. is that um, you'll see, like, I think it's Genesis 3.16 where it talks about in, where in the curse, yeah. God said the woman will desire the man. That's actually part of the curse. Mm. So if we are going to live as Christians and be redeemed, for example, we are, <laughs> believe that you're redeemed from the curse, yeah. we live above that, so, which means that men and women are equal. You know, the Bible talks about women, uh, husbands and wives, submit to yourselves one to another. Yeah. It's mutual. If you're both submitting to each other continually, in the ideal world, there, there can be no power. No mm. one's seeking to gain power Respect over the other person. one another. It's supposed, to be, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be mutual, mm -hmm. completely. And, you know, gender roles and all these sorts of things, you know, aren't really relevant. Maybe one goes to work, maybe man works, maybe woman works. That mm -hmm. should be irrelevant to how you treat each other okay. with respect. Respect is what needs to happen. Mm. If you, it's not about control. Relationships are about respect fundamentally respect. If someone says I love you, but he does not respect you, you have to question that love because mm. love might without respect. It, I don't see how that can be love. Mm. But it's not just the saying, is it? Mm. So that of course, we know yes. that to show they're it. very good at the rhetoric. Yeah. Mm. But the behavior is incongruent. Mm. So my love for you is that I'm going to control you wow. and abuse you but i'll bring you flowers and i think those confusing mm. messages wow. as well mm. you know mm. and I, I i don't understand and i often question mm. how it is then we talk about the role of women yeah how women mm -hmm. actually mothers have a great role to play okay. in how men treat women mm. because we socialize 
our boys into believing mm. that they've got more power. Mm -hmm. And so it's unusual. Mm. It's well, they, expected yes, that they've that, got that different rights. Would. Often within, um, <laughs> I definitely say often within um, an African culture. Yeah. Uh, boys are treated different to girls a lot of the time. You know, mm. boys can maybe stay out later than girls can. Yeah. Boys maybe don't have to do any housework because it's expected that their wife's mm. going to come and do it. Yeah. Why is this? Especially where we're living now. You know, people are getting married later and later. A man needs to be able to look after himself. Isn't it? You know, it's his wife, future wife, if mm -hmm. he gets married, is not a replacement mother. Isn't it? You know, and to bring up your children to believe that because he's male, he can stay out That's later, mm. leads to things like when, you're the, when the man's older, him saying, you know, you shouldn't be out late because you're female. Mm. But I can be out late as your husband because, because I'm male. Mm. You know, or things like you shouldn't have male friends because you can't protect yourself, but I'm a man and I can I have can female have friends, friends because I can protect myself. <laughs> as if, you know, it leads to a lot of um, double standards, yeah. which are just unhealthy, even if it's not in, in the context of an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. It is unhealthy to have a relationship where just your, a simple thing like your gender determines how you relate to the rest of the world, even mm. though that's how we are brought up, that like your gender, to, to think like that, it's actually if you break it down and go back to the basics, yeah. it's actually a flawed con construct. Mm. And the same thing happens in the Caribbean. I, okay. I don't think it's, it's just the same thing happens yeah. in the Caribbean. So it's, it's, it's wrong so it's to bring up kids believing that the, the male child is superior yeah. to the female child. Definitely. Yes. And the woman just has to like it and lump it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's serious. Okay. Um, Shirley, mm -hmm. in the black communities, what does domestic violence and abuse mm -hmm. often take? What form does it take? Well, it, it's, it's both the beating, the slap, the, the black because eye and, and all of that. Some things just seem so natural, mm -hmm. seem yes. so normal. Like I told you, I had a chat with a male friend today and he was saying, oh, come on, there is nothing, there is no term as domestic violence mm. and abuse. It's normal for a man to discipline his woman if, it, if she doesn't behave. What form does it take? It takes the form, as, as we talked about, it's all those little things that very often, and I say, for me it's little because I should be able to decide what I wear. I should be able to spend my money. Mm. I should be able to socialize, have contact with my family. Um, do you know, I remember some time ago, and this is a classic situation, I went with my then partner to see a friend, mm -hmm. and his wife was sitting there in her dressing gown, and she was crying. Wow. And what had happened, she had a job, and he used to go to collect her from the job. He'd give her a, a time, so if she finished at five, she had to be outside by 5.15. Wow. He calculated how long it took for her to get her coat and to be downstairs. Wow. And she worked as a sales assistant and she came home and she had fluff in her hair. And he decided that the fluff in her hair came from where she had been intimate with one of her colleagues oh, in goodness. the cupboard. Oh, and he had beaten her. And his friend came around earlier on that day and decided that it was perfectly acceptable that he would do that. Now, that is something that men, and that's the other thing, these men very often, they coalesce or they have friends who support that kind of behavior. Wow. But the, generally what I find in our community is the control of women, absolutely, certainly in the African Caribbean community. Mm. And along with that, of course, is the fact that we're ashamed to say that I would cook some food and he would come home and he doesn't like it. And I'm already in bed because he can come and go as he pleases and then he'd wake me up and tell me, come and give, give him it? something else Isn't to eat. It? Cook something else. Uh -huh. Yes. Or bringing friends home and he hasn't told you. And you have to run around and do something to satisfy, to satisfy their friends. And you might be upset and you embarrassed him. So then you, you have to face the consequences when his friends leave. Because they would anyway have the conversation about Easy. how unwelcoming mm. you are. Wow. This is serious tonight. This is serious tonight. 
We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be able to take your questions via text messages. And if you, if you really, really want to talk to Boma and Shirley, I don't know if we'll be able to take a call or two. Are you in an abusive relationship? Do you know anyone going through domestic violence and abuse, and yet they are not speaking out? Someone said it takes a black woman about... 30 to 40 serious, you know, physical violence and, and, and some, some other form of violence and abuse for us to speak up. Don't die in silence. We'll be right back. An abuser just want to control you, control what you do, control where you go, tell you what to do, what not to do. It's, it's all about control. It's all about taking your life away from you and giving you a life designed and, I mean, and patterned to suit him. Well, we will take... Don't call me on the mobile line, please. Some calls are coming in. You can call the studio line. I think that, yeah, that's the studio number on the screen if you want to... I mean, ask any question tonight. That's the studio line to call. And if, if you're not going to call live, that's the uh, mobile number to send your live text to. I will sure treat your text, I mean, messages. Don't call live on my mobile. Please call on the, on the studio line. There is a text message here. Somebody said, what should a woman do when one's abuse has been identified, what should a woman who's been able to identify, oh, this is abuse, I mean an abusive relationship, what should such a woman do? Well, I, one of the, I'm thinking now about somebody I was working with recently mm. um, who didn't have her stay. And she had to think very carefully about what she needed to do. So I, I feel that we need to, if we can, plan the leaving because mm. there are a number of things we need to take into consideration. Very often we, we think that just leaving is the end of it, but mm. sometimes leaving is the beginning. Leaving is the beginning, not the end. Leaving is the beginning. Interesting. Um, you're, you're still vulnerable. Matter of fact, sometimes you know, there's an escalation wow. of, of the abuse. Wow. But you need to um, be prepared. You need to talk to friends. You need to ensure you've got good support systems. Mm -hmm. You need to use the resources that are out there, like the national... One minute, one minute, Shirley. Good evening, thanks for calling. Hello? Uh, good evening. Good evening, thanks for calling. Yeah, please, I want to make a little contribution. Go on, please. Uh, because when we are talking about domestic violence, you know, like the people think that it's really women. What about men? Mm. And their wife abused because maybe they are in, you know, the breadwinner of the family, or maybe they are, you know, like in, in the country before the man came to the country. What about the men that the woman put hand on Who his foot and say, "You are not going anywhere. I okay. will call police if you dare do anything against, you know, my will." So why can't we balance it in a way so that people will know that abuse doesn't happen only to women? Because when we talk about domestic violence, then we say it's only women. No, many men can't tell you what their wife is doing to them. Mm. You know, okay. they cannot because they are ashamed to tell people like, my, "Do you know that my wife slapped me? Do you know that my wife, you know, if I don't do this, you know, like maybe because I don't have a job, you know, something else." Please try to let us enlighten on all those things. So all right, or go. Issues. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, go calling from Ireland. We appreciate your call. It, yes, you, you men not, get you abused as well. That. Yeah, but you know the proportion, and that is not to minimise their distress. Yeah. And if a woman is abusing her husband, she's similarly wrong. Yeah. We're not saying that it's okay for women to abuse men, mm -hmm. and that women are the only one who get abused. Proportionately, mm -hmm. it is mostly women. It is. That mostly is women. the reality. Natalie yes. told us last week that the the ratio is like ninety five to to you know. It's, so it's, it's mostly it's women. It's definitely women i mean the caller mentioned the word balance the yeah that he might be hearing often 
uh, people talking about men abusing women is because mm-hmm. the balance is that way. Met more men abuse women than women who abuse men. Yeah. It's definitely wrong if a woman does it. Mm. Um, and there's advice lines that men can call and there's things that people that they can do. The similar things that we talk about that women can do, yeah. men can do. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. If I will say to any man out there who's been in an abusive relationship, yeah. get then, out. It's the same advice, get out. It, it's wrong. Okay. okay. There are helplines. Okay, good evening. Thanks call. for calling. Oh, good evening. Good e- um, I just think that this program is absolutely fantastic. And God bless you all. Well done. Thank you. For, for putting this together. Thank you. Um, one, one of the things that I was looking at um, in terms of um, domestic violence, okay. I was looking about the whole background, the whole upbringing of where all this is coming from. And I'm actually writing a book about mothers um, and what they cause when they don't grow, you know, grow their children correctly. I have two boys. And I've grown up my boys that even in the house they have to respect their sister who lived here mm. with them. And it really starts from a woman. You have to remember we carry um, both species of sex, both male and female. Mm. And whatever we contribute to teach them is what they will actually end up doing in the end. So you remember we suckle babies, we, uh, we, 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 we develop them in every way. So most of the love comes from us. I know that a father does contribute, but mm. your first love starts with your mother. So whatever is going on in domestic violence, us as mothers and as women, we have to start to take the ball by the horns mm. and say no more. I think that the churches as well need to wake up and have a reality check about mm. what's really taking place. And also, we need it done with prayer and also with practical help. All I can say to you women, all good luck with what you're doing. Uh, Thank it's you. It's really good. Thank you so much. Thank you. We, we appreciate your <laughs> yes. call. You, you want to respond to our call quickly? Yeah, um, I was quite interested when she raised... Uh, topic of mothers. I yeah. think that uh, it's very important the way a mother brings up their ch- children. Mm. Often, the reason that domestic abuse, boys witness the domestic abuse and it's modelled by fathers. Yeah. Uh, we, so I think that is very important mm-hmm. that it's modelled by men. I think women definitely and mothers have a responsibility. Mm-hmm. Often, by mo- molly coddling your children and, mm. and not giving him any responsibility yeah. and any consequences for his behaviour mm. and always excusing him mm. can lead to somebody who always thinks that so if his wife said this is not what you should do or his yeah. partner is not what you should do, mm. then they, they don't understand it mm. because all their life their mother has excused them. And it's, them. it's that same thing we were talking about before about boys being treated differently to girls. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very bad. It has long-term consequences. And a lot of mothers, you may want the best for your child, uh, for your son. You may yeah. want your son to have this wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. But b- by creating these, uh, these things that your partner must do yeah. in the future, you're, giving, you're basically creating a problem for his future wife. Wow. You know, your wife. She must be this excellent cook. She must do the wonderful mm. housework while holding down two jobs mm. and bringing up your children and looking fantastic. You're setting a standard that... It's very high. Maybe some, maybe some women can, can do that, but yeah. not all women do that. Not women, that's not their forte, and it's not a reason for them to be controlled, manipulated, or put down if they don't meet that standard. Mm, okay. But it's really okay. important for us to remember that if a child has seen abuse, it doesn't mean that that child would naturally be an abuser. Mm, definitely. Mm. It's because choice, my, it? yes, I mean, my son is the complete opposite to his father, and wow. that is a result of witnessing me being abused. Mm. Yes. That he wants he to is, do better. He is yeah. a very gentle. Mm. He is a wonderful son, mm. you know, and um, can't wait for a daughter-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> for my that, son. So that's interesting. For some men, they mm. have because, and, and I, I feel it sometimes too, it's to do with the relationship they have with, that, mother, that they they have with, have, they have with the mother. They mm. do not want to repeat that pattern. Wow. They do not want to, to do that to another okay, woman. Okay, okay. So um, Natalie, before the last call, I came, I mean, call came in, um, I asked you what should someone who's been able to identify abuse, you know, what steps should that person take? And you were talking about getting ready to leave. Living is another phase of life. And then yes. you want to shed more light on that. Well, because sometimes we feel that just r- that leaving is the end. I've been, I, I got away. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that actually ups the ante um, mm. and, and leaves you quite vulnerable mm. um, and that certainly if I can talk about myself yeah. and I know that a lot of the women I speak with we talk about the way out mm-hmm. and it is preparing uh, having a strategy that will enable you to be supported 
So you look at where you're going to go, what you need to take. You need to tell your GP. You need to use the helplines. Mm. You need to look at, for example, what you're going to do with the children if they're at school, mm. how you're going to manage to get to work. Mm. You need to tell people who you feel are able mm. to support you in what could be a very long journey. Yeah. Okay. And it needs to be it needs to be someone you can trust someone who won't reveal your location yes um, and someone who will maintain your confidentiality yes. no matter what sob story he comes he to comes tell them with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. and mm -hmm. maybe having money put aside if mm. you can yes all, the, all these sorts of planning if you the helplines are very good because if something goes to court and you have called the national mm -hmm. domestic yeah. uh, violence helpline they can give you the transcripts okay. to, your, mm. to show that on these dates you called to talk about this incident. Um, okay. If you've been beaten, you can take pictures mm -hmm. and keep them safely. Just having a plan and a record because the time that the, the police come involved, become involved, mm. it could have been going on for years, but there's you absolutely say. no record because you've not called, you've not anybody. called the police, okay. not told anybody. Uh. And just make sure it's someone you can trust. Don't ever, it, well, there may be cases <laughs> where it's good, but. I would say don't tell someone who's his friend who you've become close to. Mm. Because, because they're not going to oh, have the situation yeah. anyway. If, mm. if, it's, if you can find someone who's removed mm. from, this, from his life yeah. mm -hmm. and you can tell them that, and help them to support you, maybe have a code word that you can text if you're in trouble. Yeah. So if you text this word, that person knows they need to call the police and get to your, mm. to get to your location immediately mm. because of the heightened risk at the time of leaving. It's almost like they can smell it. They can smell when you're going to leave. Yeah. Um, mm. And that's when sometimes they'll become really nice to yeah. you or sometimes more abusive <laughs> so that you feel more afraid mm. to mm. do anything. Help, yeah. Yes. So mm. it's, it's often times when I mean, like, you think you're going to leave and then they become lovely and wonderful. And, you're thinking, and you think, oh, oh no, something's going to change. Yeah. It's going to change. Yes, but just be aware that because they're very manipulative, they can see in mm. you when you, you're Get that mm. strength yeah. within you to leave. They can, mm -hmm. they can, they can often they can sense mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and it's a very, very mm -hmm. dangerous wow. time. Mm -hmm. They're also very good at sensing when you have friends yeah. who mm. are confident and friends who will and support you and, and trying to yes. to break so that those down. So break yes, that, yes. Yeah. The Friendship. other thing I would say is. If you are thinking of leaving yeah. and you have children mm -hmm. and the school has spoken with you about their concerns for the child, mm -hmm. if in the past you have pretended that you have no idea what is going yeah. on, now is the time mm -hmm. to tell to the up. school. Absolutely. Okay, our time is going tonight. Well, we're treating domestic violence and abuse throughout the month of May. So I can assure mm. you we'll continue from wherever we stop tonight. But before we go tonight, uh, can I really ask you, how important is, is it for someone who is in an abusive relationship to take a step of moving out? It's important. It's critical. Or will Be you advise someone who is there to stay? Stay, manage the situation. <laughs> no. Hope for him I'll to change. To, Pray for him to change. You have no power over you him know, changing. Uh, that can't. is a myth. Yeah. You have no power over him changing. Even, even with praying. No matter how you Praying try. is not a, a, another form of controlling somebody. So to say you're going to pray and get someone to change their behavior, which is what is often advocated, you know, pray, pray harder. You're a bad Christian. You need to have more faith. Yeah. And then they'll change. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask you because DV is almost seen as as normal and, and something to including the pastors who are who are practicing exactly domestic that's violence. where i'm going sadly <laughs> many black pastors even see it as normal they tell you to go and submit mm. more pray mm. more be a mm. better wife mm -hmm. forgive mm. and as a woman who deals with issues like this what do you think the church should do how do you think the church should handle this situation but there are some pastors who are practicing that so they might not be slapping their wives but they're controlling mm. Mm. And, and they if, quote the Bible. Yeah, I mean, even if they're not, the, the issue is that pastors aren't, uh, often aren't um, educated enough in the area. They need to get educated. Preaching about, I mean, I've often heard things, people preaching about forgiveness. Oh, a man did this to this woman and she forgave him and then he suddenly changed. Mm. That's not the whole story. I don't even know if they're even true, but that's yeah. definitely not the whole story. But forgiveness does not mean you don't have boundaries. I have forgiven the person yeah. who's um, abused me for years. Yeah. I've forgiven him. I don't want to speak to him. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in the same room with him mm -hmm. because he, mm -hmm. he hasn't changed. It's not safe for me to mm -hmm. do that. And I can see that God loves me. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. Someone says, is moving out the only option? Well, it depends. If, if you feel, and, and I think we need to be clear as well about 
what it is, what can we do? Because sometimes women feel that staying in the relationship, yeah. they can make the man change. Mm -hmm. I think if you feel that there are people around you that can support the two of you, yeah. And it might be that your support, the support you get is different to the, the help that he needs. Yeah. Because it's about the man changing his behavior. And I know that the man from Ireland called and said men get abused as well. But I'm really focusing on men abusing women. Okay. If the man is going for help and it's genuine, you feel that you want to stay mm -hmm. because you've decided that on the scale of 1 to 10, he's all oh, just that little bit abusive. He's not that big bit mm. down there abusive then, you know, I, I'm not advocating that people do what I did. I'm saying, though, that it is important yeah. for people to know that you don't have any control over that man's behavior. Mm. He is the only one that can control his behavior. Wow. I think it's about empowering the woman to make the decision for herself and supporting her along the way. There's no point saying to somebody, you must now leave and trying to drag her, what's wrong with you? You're in an abusive relationship, leave. Mm -hmm. Because that's not going to help her. She needs to make that decision for herself. I know mm -hmm. the thing that helped me is having a friend who said, no, but you're wonderful. You know, just saying, I don't understand why this is happening. She never told me to leave. Mm. She just supported me and helped me to get, start on that journey of finding my own identity again mm -hmm. and my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I went back to my Bible and I saw Jeremiah 29, 11, which I love in the Amplified Version because it talks about how God's plans for us are welfare, peace and hope. Mm -hmm. And that is completely opposite to domestic abuse. Mm. So when I see who, helping someone to see what the Bible really says mm. and their identity and their mm. purpose, they will make their own decision, mm. you know, oh. they, they will make their own decision and that's what the empowerment is key. Wow. It's not the decision, yes. it's, the, it's the empowerment first and foremost. I'm I think. feeling that you are entitled yeah. to a better life. Exactly. You, know, you feeling deserve you're more you deserve it. than what you, you deserve get it. it. I mean, my, my, um, for me, it was going to my GP. And him saying to me, I know, Mrs. Martin, that you're trying to hold on, you know, because you've got the children. But I do believe you're doing a very, you have a very good job. And I know that when I say this to you, that it is better for two children to be with one, one parent. Who is happy and can look after them mm. than being in a marriage where they're having to live with that abuse? Yeah. Wow! Because so an abusive for me. parent yes. is a b abusive father is a bad father. Full stop. It doesn't matter. An abusive father, father, father is, is a bad, a bad father. father. Definitely. Full if you don't stop. honor and respect the mother of your children, you are damaging the woman who looks after those children, nurtures them, and you're damaging her ability to do that well. I heard the story of a man who call up the, his son mm -hmm. and start painting his wife black to the son. Look at the stupid yeah. mother you have. Mm -hmm. Look at yeah. how, how oh, stupid yes. she is. Yes. And yes. you're damaging yes. by doing that you're damaging that child's opinion of themselves because he came from that mother. Isn't 50%. it? And you'll be thinking, oh, 50%. really? Yeah. yeah. So, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, our time is <laughs> fast spent tonight. We'll definitely continue from here next week. But let me read this text message mm -hmm. before we go. Someone said, thanks for having such a topic. Some African men in London, like my husband, abuse their wives financially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They think they are the head, but no wisdom to foresee the future as when to change direction in life on areas of job or business. Mm -hmm. I would not accept any suggest suggestion made by the wife because he sees her as inferior. Yes. Yet she brings in the money. Mm -hmm. Yes. How when the wives have joint accounts with them, they oh. hardly bring out the money to solve crucial things in the house. Mm. For that I stopped the joint accounts. Yes. Focus on my children. Yes. And manage the home effectively. Mm -hmm. Most African men need to grow up and look after <laughs> their family. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Blessing. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I you have a lot of questions to ask mm. tonight, but our time is gone. Uh, what I would advise is keep your text messages, I mean, your questions coming via text messages. We, we're still on this topic next week. This is what we're doing for the month of May. Mm. We're still on domestic violence and abuse next week. If we are not able to take any of your questions tonight or your calls, please save them till next week. Send me to your, your questions via text messages. Let's gather them. And next week, we're going to kick off by answering your questions. Thank you so much, Shelly and, and um, Boma. Thank you. I Very really nice. hope we'll have you again next week because we, we haven't even ask, answered most of most our of questions. questions. Mm -hmm. um, we Men in Worship is a special event. I was there last year. It was awesome. 
organized by um, uh, Praise, Pastor Praise Asamota, the, the host of Praise Talk on Faith TV here as well. Please make your way down for this event, Women in Worship, on the 25th of May. I should be able to bring you more information on that event soon. And um, Faith TV is raising you, you know, this group of intercessors. Please register, team up with Faith TV as we transform and change lives together. Log on to www.questionsintheart.com to catch up on this episode or past episodes. And then, you know, there are materials on our website you can, you know, buy that will bless and transform your lives. We'll come your way next week on domestic violence and abuse. Send me your questions via text messages. You know, get ready your questions to call in live next week. We might, we might have few studio audience next week to ask their questions live as well. Mm -hmm. Till we see you same time, same station next week. Do not die in silence. There is more to life. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. We appreciate you.